there, guys, and welcome to the Ruby to Rose live stream here on May 15th. Uh, we're halfway through May here. Uh, we're going to come to you today talk a little bit about another famous person from here in St. Joe. I'm um, going to talk about a little bit of their contributions to both St. Joe, which was a little less than some of the other people we've talked about. But really, this, the whole United States, this person had a major impact on. Um, we are still closed for now. We'll have an update on that very soon. Um, but we are looking forward to opening up so everyone can come in. Uh, but today we're going to talk about a very, very special person. So I want to get right into talking about her. Um, her name is Nellie Taylor Ross. Now, Miss Ross was a very, very special person in American history. Uh, she was an American politician as well as worked for the U.S. Mint. Uh, Miss Ross was born in St. Joseph uh, all the way back in 1876, and she lived here for about seven years or so. Um, her parents actually left because her family home burned down here in town, and the land was going to be foreclosed on. Her father couldn't afford to afford the land. Uh, so they ended up moving to uh, Milton Vale in Kansas. She grew up there and ended up going to school in uh, Omaha. And she uh, attended a two-year college, ended up teaching kindergarten for a couple of years. And then while visiting family in 1900, she met William Bradford Ross, uh, who was a lawyer and wanted to set up a law firm out in the, uh, in the West. Uh, they ended up getting married in 1902 and moved to Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, while living in Cheyenne, her husband became very, very important to the Democratic Party in Wyoming and ran for multiple offices and continued to lose repeatedly. At one point, he even told his wife that he was no longer going to run for an office. Uh, but in 1922, he decided to run for governor of Wyoming and won the election. About a year and a half into his election, though, he actually died while in office uh, from a complication from an appendectomy. And so the Democratic Party of Wyoming decided to nominate his wife for the special election that was coming up later that month. Nellie did not care to win, so she did not campaign for herself at all, yet won in a landslide victory larger than her husband had won earlier that same year, or two years earlier when he was gone in office. On January 5th, 1925, she actually was inaugurated as the first female governor in American history. Um, a note to that, though, she was the first female governor by only 16 days. Um, Sam Ferguson was actually inaugurated as governor of Georgia, or Texas 16 days later. Um, while she was governor, she actually was very big on the Democratic Party's more progressive concepts, including... Uh, tax cuts, government assistance to farmers, banking reforms, along with women's rights within the workforce there in Wyoming. Um, Wyoming at the time was known for being a very, very open state to women's rights. They actually were the first state to give women the right to vote all the way back in the mid-1800s. Uh, so they were kind of ahead of the time. Uh, Nellie did run for re-election in 1926, um, but was barely defeated by the Republican candidate, um, many of her, she actually blamed her loss on her unwillingness to no longer support prohibition during that era. Uh, but she did stay involved with the Democratic Party. And in, uh, actually in 1928, she was taken to the National Convention and received 31 votes from 10 states to become the Vice President of the United States candidate. Um, and that was on at least the first ballot. She didn't make it past the first ballot. Uh, but she did give multiple speeches during the convention and later served as the chairman of the Democratic National Committee's women's division. Uh, during that time, she did serve in that capacity for a, a while. Um, she was involved, highly involved with the Democratic Party. And then in 1933, Franklin Delano Roosevelt decided to appoint her the chairman or the director of the U.S. Mint. Uh, she actually worked with her assistant, who was Mary Margaret O'Reilly. Um, again, they became known as uh, the, the sweethearts of the, the treasury. So through her whole time there, she actually was highly involved with the running of the treasury. Um, she would actually travel around the country explaining what the treasury did and actually was involved in some very major decisions in the treasury. Um, during her five full terms as the head of the treasury, uh, she brought forth the Franklin half dollar, um, 
which no longer existed today, but were obviously uh, back in that time. Uh, she actually is the one that led to the starting of proof coins being sold. Um, so now if you want to go buy a proof coin, you can actually buy those at the Mint. And she's the reason why you can buy them. Um, along with that, she helped introduce the Frank or the Roosevelt dime, the Jefferson nickel, the steel penny, which was used during World War II, and the building of Fort Knox. So most things that we think of when we think of the treasure of Fort Knox, when we put coins in our pocket, were due to Nellie Halo Ross. Uh, along with that, uh, when she was actually as the uh, head of the treasure, the treasury. She was given a special accommodate or um, her medal uh, for being the head of that. And she was also the first female head of the treasury. Um, in 1953, she did choose to retire from the treasury and was replaced by William Brett and then went on to contribute to magazines and travel the world. Um, she actually lived up until she was 101 years old, um, traveled to Wyoming for the last time in 1972 at the age of 96. And when she died in Washington, D.C. at 101, she was the oldest living governor of the United States. Um, and then she was later buried by her family plot in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, so this is a little bit about Miss Nellie Halo Ross. Um, like I said, she was one of our uh, St. Joe's daughters, who didn't necessarily do a lot in St. Joe, but greatly impacted how we live our lives today. Um, like I said, with all the coinage that she led, led to, and she was also the head of the Treasury during World War II. Um, so she lived through some of the major events that occurred with our Treasury. Uh, so she's kind of our, our story today. Um, tune in next week. We'll have a few more people to talk about, and we'll have some more stuff about what's going to be happening here at the Row. Um, we are looking to make some new exhibits that we're working on right now. So we look forward to hearing from you guys. And if you have anyone else that you really want to hear about here in St. Joe, like I always say, put it down in the comments at the bottom. We'll be happy to talk about them, look into what their lives are like. Um, we look forward to seeing you all next week. So thanks so much for watching today and you have a great day. Bye.